If you've ever been on the internet, I mean, you're here right now, you probably wound up in the comments section of at least one article about a mass shooting, some other kind of killing spree, and seen dozens of assholes make comments like, Dude, if I was there, I would've totally stopped that guy. I totally know Kung Fu, and i just like knock the weapon out of his hand and then break his neck with a spin kick, and then my mom would finally love me. My name is Joe Lazito, and one day in 2011, my morning commute was interrupted by the tail end of a 28-hour-long stabbing spree. The reason that spree ended is because I stopped it, and I learned... The stabber, Maxim Gelman, was already famous across the city. I didn't know any of that, though, because I'd gotten up too early to catch the paper. So when an obviously high person staggered crazily into the train, I just kind of figured morning in New York, you know? That creepy guy, who I'd later learn was Gelman, started banging on the door of the engineer's compartment. Ah, let me in! I was sitting right by the door. The only thing separating the engineer and myself was a wall. It turned out there were two cops on the other side of the door, lying in wait in case Gelman hopped on this train. I found out later they'd recognized him, but they didn't charge out to stop him. Instead, they asked him a polite question. Who are you? I'm the police. You're not the police. You'd expect two armed cops to, I don't know, maybe do something about a wanted fugitive spree killer that they were on the train specifically to arrest, but they stayed put. So Gelman walked up to me, whipped out an 8-inch knife, and told me, You're going to die! Then he stabbed me. I was in the sort of situation every man thinks about at least twice a day. Suddenly thrust into a life-or-death situation that required me to become a badass. Unfortunately, I had no badass training. But I have watched a lot of MMA, and when he brought back his arm to stab me again, I decided to dive in for a single-leg takedown. It should have looked like this. But in reality, I shot in too high and wound up tackling him by the waist, rather than getting him in the leg. So he stabbed me repeatedly in the skull. The good news for you armchair badasses is that you can have no idea what you're doing but still succeed on dumb luck and balls. I outweighed Gelman by a lot, so he went down despite the power of a knife on his side. So we're both on the ground, I'm on top, and he still got his stabbing machine in hand. I tried to grab his right hand, which held the knife, with my left. But I missed, and he sliced me good in the thumb. I tried to catch him a second time and failed, so he slashed me again in my left tricep. My third grab was a charm, though. I caught his hand and slammed it into the ground. He dropped the knife. Once I had him pinned and was, you know, dying of blood loss, the cops decided it was safe enough to arrest Gelman. Next thing I remember is a cop tapping me on the shoulder. You can get up now, we got him. I thought that was being charitable, but at the time I didn't exactly feel argumentative. There was no pain yet, just this warm feeling from the blood gushing out of me. It was like standing in the shower with warm water spraying the top of your head and flowing down the back of your neck. And again, when you'd expect the police to jump to my aid, they didn't. None of them even touched me. The only guy to render aid was another passenger, Alfred Douglas, aka Napkin Man, because he staunched my bleeding injuries with napkins. I think Napkin Man probably saved my life, but at this point I'd been stabbed roughly all the times a person can be stabbed while remaining conscious. And so I passed out. When I eventually came to in the hospital, it was kind of frustrating to realize that none of the early coverage mentioned me or Napkin Man. The police gave all the credit to the two officers who'd been in the subway train with me, only neither of them actually even left the booth until I disarmed Gelman. During the grand jury hearing, one of the cops testified, I started to come out, I opened the door, but I thought Gelman had a gun, so I closed the door and stayed inside. I can see how in a stressful situation you might mistake a knife for a gun. But also, that kind of makes it more infuriating. If you, Mr. Cop A. Policington, thinks this insane, drug-addled murderer has a gun, and he's sitting on a train bound for Times Square, don't you want to stop him at all costs? So yeah, I decided to sue the NYPD. The first case I brought got dropped, so I acted as my own lawyer for the second case and finally made it to a judge. The judge said, Mr. Lazito's version of the story sounds highly credible, and his version of events rings true. But I still lost the case. Here's how that was justified in its original legalese. No direct promises of protection were made to Mr. Lazito, nor were there direct actions taken to protect Mr. Lazito prior to the attack. Therefore, a special duty did not exist. It turns out there was a major piece of legal precedent in my way. In 2005, the Supreme Court ruled on Castle Rock v. Gonzalez. In that case, a woman sued the Castle Rock PD after they failed to respond when she complained that her estranged husband had violated a protective order and abducted their kids. He eventually murdered them. The Supreme Court ruled in the police department's favor. It turns out it's literally not their job to protect people. 
So to the internet badasses who are about to comment on this video and claim they would totally nailed the takedown, you should make a note of a few things. First, my insurance had me in and out of the hospital in two days. And the hospital didn't give me any AIDS or hepatitis tests after I'd been stabbed with a knife that had stabbed other people. Apparently that's not medically necessary. Second, if you ever get the chance to confront a dangerous armed madman, don't trust in the police having your back. Don't expect to get the credit. And hope like hell there's another napkin man waiting in the wings to help you.